Hello everybody, today I am replacing the rear brake caliper on my Toyota MR2 Mark III. It's done about 105,000 miles and the rear right brake caliper seized and failed its MOT. I've replaced that, but the one on the left is just as old, so it could go any time. I've got a replacement from an MR2 recycler. If you need to get one of your own, in the UK, you can go to mr2roadsterrecycling at gmail.com. The first step is to disconnect the handbrake. And the handbrake cable is fixed on like so. It's a, a two-step job. One is with some pliers to remove uh, this clip. And the second step of removing the handbrake cable is to remove this clip and then the clevis pin should just slide out and the whole cable can be removed if it doesn't just slide out because it's seized i have a separate clevis pin removal video keep in mind when the handbrake cable is removed reattaching it does not make it engage again it may need to be recalibrated and there's plenty of videos on youtube covering that process I'm going to put a link in the description for a handbrake calibration video that I thought was very effective. And there's the clevis pin out. The next step is to remove the brake lines. To start with, I have loosened the bleed nipple here. Um, I've used an eight millimeter spanner. However, some vehicles take a seven. I've also clamped the brake line with some vice grips to reduce leakage and in the back there is a 14 millimeter bolt to loosen the brake line don't lose the copper washers you'll be needing those if you don't replace them all right now we can begin to remove the brake there is a 12 millimeter bolt at the bottom just here i run a 12 millimeter 3 8 tube socket off that followed by an extension, followed by a socket. Uh, that way I can get over this uh, suspension arm and uh, spin it out. Then the caliper is on a hinge. This does not have a bolt, it's just a hinge. So the whole thing can slide up and then be pushed forward and come off this hinge here. raised it up on that hinge and there we go it's off and that's the original gone now the next step is by no means mandatory the caliper carrier is an inanimate object and it rarely wears out however my replacement came with a red one, so I'm gonna swap them over. There's a 17 millimeter bolt just in there. There's another 17 millimeter bolt. My finger's on it just there. Uh, they're on really tight, about 110 Newton meters at the factory. Um, so I'm gonna crack those off and re replace it with a new carrier. However, you don't have to do it. And there's also at 110 Newton meters, high risk of uh, snapping these bolts and then you're in a world of hurt so when I tighten these back up again I'm gonna take them to 60. Okay the new carrier is on, the pads are in, uh, these would all be in situ anyway uh, if you skip this step. So it's time to put the new caliper on. Um, one thing to make sure you've done is that you've wound the piston all the way back in using a piston winding tool. Then you've wound it back 180 degrees. And thirdly, you have to make sure that this uh, void here is at top dead center because it has to slide down on top of a uh, metal dowel that protrudes from the inside brake caliper and it has to slide into that slot 
or they won't connect properly. Also apply lots of silicon grease to the uh, slide pin just here. Now the bottom bolt can go back in, use plenty of copper grease and don't go too tight on any of these bolts because as I said before, if you snap them, you're in for a world of hurt. So I have released the vice grips from the rear brake line here and I've reattached it to the new caliper and I'm tightening the 14 millimeter bolt on it. Again, tight enough to get a seal, but not so tight as to snap it. Next, I put the handbrake cable back on. Um, this is just a really difficult job, and if you're doing this, you have my condolences. If you put the surf clip on first, then you can't get the clevis pin. If you put the clevis pin in first, then you can't get the surf clip over. Um, yeah, it's just a tough job. Um, be prepared for lots of swearing and bloody knuckles. I don't have any pro tips to get this back on. And now it is time to bleed the brakes. Since this is the rear left brake caliper, this has the longest brake lines of the vehicle, so it's a great opportunity to flush all the old brake fluid all the way through. I went to Alfred's and I bought this kit uh, with packaging that looks like it came out of 1992. And it's a one-man brake bleeding kit. You slide this rubber hose over the bleed nipple, then you lock it on with this white lock. I've got it sitting there attached to a uh, bungee cord just in case it gets uh, quite heavy and the hose fails. So with the bleed nipple open, we're gonna pump the brakes five times and see how it goes. One, two, three, four, As I say, I'm gonna do this many more times than is necessary. Um, I'm gonna empty an entire one pint bottle of DOT4 brake fluid into the reservoir and hopefully this nasty dark brown liquid will start to run a bit more clear. Okay, so that's all done. Dot four brake fluid is uh, filled to the top of the reservoir. We can then close off the bleed nipple here. Right, and we're all done. We can put the wheel back on, we're good to go.